Hi, 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 everyone. Um, so I want to give you uh, something that just came out and actually relay that uh, Inside Edition is saying that they are confirming that it was not the two roommates that were left in the home that called 911, that it was not them. Now, I had heard that it was a friend, right? That it was a friend that had found them. But it didn't say, right? So it kind of did sound like it was an outside, somebody like coming to the home after, from external, not somebody that was inside of the home technically. But either way, Inside Edition is saying that they confirmed that um, they was not either of the roommates that made the call. And then the other thing that they added was that it was um, that somebody's making claim that one of the girls had a stalker two months ago. As we talked about the other day, was that there was a group of college students that were saying that there was somebody uh, going after them, supposedly, or showed a knife, right? So I don't know, right? I don't know. Because their, their statement is like twice removed or something, he said. I am not sure. I will leave the video in this description so you can watch it yourself, right? I just don't want to put it out there and um, add like too much speculation and craziness to it. But I will play the segment that I have pulled up for you guys because it does show you the timeline of everything and it gives you like a visual to it better than what we had seen earlier on my last video. So I'm going to show you this, but I will add the other video. That way you can take a listen for yourself and hear what I'm talking about and you know, that way we're kind of staying with what's being thrown out and um, see if anything comes of it or any of it ends up being factual or not, because I'm just not sure at this point. But let me push play on this for you. This horrific attack on four college students happened less than a mile from the University of Idaho campus. Sororities and fraternities and their out of houses are mostly centralized in this area. New information from Idaho State Police reveals two of the victims, Ethan Chapin and Zana Kronodal, were together Saturday night, November 12th. They went to a Sigma Chi fraternity party across from their home on King Road from 8 to 9 p.m. The other two victims, Kaylee Gonsalves and Madison Mogan, were at the Corner Club on Main Street. It's about a mile and a half away from the home on King Road. Police say they were there from around 10 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. After leaving the bar, the girls went to the Grub Truck just down Main Street from the Corner Club. It's about a six minute walk. They're seen in a video from the food truck ordering food around 1.40 Sunday morning. U of I students tell us it's a common weekend routine to go from the corner club to the food truck. Idaho State Police says all four victims were back at the King Road house, a little more than a mile from the food truck by 1.45 a.m. Sunday, November 13th. What unfolded after that is unclear. It wasn't until noon on Sunday, police received a call of an unconscious person. When they got to the home on King Road, they found the four victims, Ethan, Zanna, Kaylee, and Maddie, dead. They confirm all four were stabbed early Sunday morning. The Latah County coroner tells us all the victims could have been killed with the same knife or a very similar knife. Police say they haven't yet found the weapon. And during the only and first news conference held earlier this week, reporters asked Moscow police about that video from the food truck that I mentioned. It's circulating all over social media. Moscow Police Chief James Fry says this Twitch video is helping give them the time and space of where Maddie and Kaylee were leading up to their deaths. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. In this live stream from the grub truck, you see the girls walk into the frame and up to the food truck. It appears they're with a young man, the one in the hat and dark jacket. Here, you can see him put his hood on. He hangs back several feet behind the girls as they order from the food truck. He then follows Kaylee and Maddie after they order and stands right next to them. It looks like he never ordered any food, but you can see him talking to other people there. Several minutes later, the girls grab their food, take a picture, laugh and talk to each other, and quickly walk away. One of the people the young man is talking to points out that the girls left. He throws up his hand, waits a moment, and then appears to walk after them. You see him wave at the girls and then walk a separate direction. This recording shows all three are at the food truck for about 10 minutes. And police say Kaylee and Madison were home just minutes later by about 1.45. Their home is a little more than a mile from the grub truck. A University of Idaho student who says he's friends with the victims told us this young man was with the girls at the corner club before this. ISP says authorities contacted the young man in the video and they interviewed him as part of the investigation. They are not labeling him as a suspect or person of interest at this time. 
Again, police say they have not identified a person or persons of interest or a suspect in this investigation. But anyone near these areas who saw anything suspicious has surveillance video or can provide any critical information. Right. So the phone number is on the screen if you have any information. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting detail, too, that they added at the end, which is that a friend of the girls said that they had seen this man with the girls at the corner club earlier. Right. So it does indicate that the man with the hoodie pulled up wasn't just someone, someone random that was following with them or following behind them, right? He was in fact uh, with them at some point in time throughout the night. And so was it that they were being dismissive, right? I mean, it appears that they were being dismissive uh, based off of what we see. They were not giving any attention and then they grabbed their food and didn't even say like, okay, let's go. They just went. And so I don't know who that is. I mean, if it does end up possibly, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say anything. I don't, I don't want to say too much. Right. But either way, it's supposedly they are cooperating with police. So that is good. That is really, really good. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I it's so it's such a sad case. It's so sad. It's so confusing. And I pray for the families and the community and every student that attends the university. I would be very scared if I attended the university. I'm I'm sure of it. And I would not want to be there either. So I can understand everybody's concern with wanting to get out of there and take off. So continue to pray for everybody that's involved and surrounding this horrific case. But I will talk to you all if I see another update. And I hope that you all are having a good one. Bye, everybody.